What's up, guys? Welcome to today's podcast. So guess what? Special edition. Sorry for the delay. Happens often. uh, And we're dealing with things. But hey, uh, very, very excited about today's podcast. I, uh, you know, we're all going through some things right now. And Minerva Beauty, uh, who's been a huge sponsor of this podcast for the last, uh, you know, five years now. They were the very first sponsor, the first people to jump on and say, hey, we want to help and provide free salon education. So they reached out to me the other day and they said, hey, Matt, we've got some guests and some really smart people that we want you to have on your podcast uh, and kind of do like a special edition to help out the industry as much as possible. So without further ado, I have some really awesome people on here live with me. I've got Sam Via and April McDaniel. So you guys are going to learn. A, a, a lot of you guys, hairdressers out there, know Sam Via. Uh, April McDaniel is the smart one. So we're going to uh, we're going to pick her brain. Uh, and me and Sam are going to talk hair industry. She's going to talk. She's a, a certified accountant, um, and she has a lot more titled than that. So I'm going to let her talk about that. Um, but Sam, um, thank you for being on the show. Um, we got the internet worked out. Also, Elizabeth from the PBA was going to be on the show, guys. But uh, just so you know, she took one for the team, and uh, the internet connection wasn't really working. So she jumped off. We're all sacrificing a little bit now, uh, but we're going to talk about everything that this industry is going through, and we're going to really just get down to the facts because we want people to have um, less negativity and just a positive outlook about what the future is going to be about. So, Sam, uh, why don't you start us off uh, and give your little kind of intro to this, and then we'll we'll go from there. All right, Matt. Thank you so much, first of all, for the opportunity to have a voice which I think is so important right now, more than important right now than anything, my friends, is for us to cultivate connection. So Matt, Minerva, thank you for giving us the opportunity for myself and April. April, it's a pleasure to be with you. You are the smart one. And more than ever, we need people like you to guide us through this, as I'm sure we're going to have a lot of questions on the financial side. But I think that this is a time, who would have ever thought that we would be in this position and where we're at? And when I say cultivate connection, this is a time for us to really push our pause button, push our pause button and think about where our life is, our professional life and our personal life is right now. And for some reason, this is happening. And I'm using this as a means for myself, which I'm going to talk about. It's just for me to just push that pause button and really cultivate connections with my colleagues, my family, my friends, uh, Everybody that I can just making a connection. And I think it's all about reaching out. So thanks for this opportunity, Matt. For sure. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm really happy because the one thing about Sam that I love the most is the fact that, you know, he's always a positive influence in the industry. I've looked up to him for a long time. You know, free slot, somebody just commented yesterday uh, and said that Sam Via and, and free slot education are the OGs of online uh, free education. So, Uh, You know, anytime I get to hang out with you, it's it's a great time. So April, let's talk because all of us have a lot of questions. If you guys have questions, post them in the chat. I can see the chat from all the different channels. Um, So post it in there. And then, um, yeah, we're going to get started. I'll ask the questions as I see them. And April is going to kind of give us the the basic facts. So the first thing that I really want you to get into is um, really the funding that's going around and and what salon should do first, I guess, is what we should talk about. Sure. So first, just like Sam, I'm really excited to be here. Thanks, Minerva, and thanks, Matt, for having me. I'm a little bit starstruck, I have to say. Um, uh, This is an exciting time, certainly for the the tax profession. It's a day-by-day learning new things, lots of things that we don't know. I am of the mind that um, it's really important that we think about the uh, opportunities that come through struggles. And right now we're in a time where definitely through these struggles, we can find some strength. And so what I want you to really think about right now is 
you have the time available to you to put some effort into your business and be that business person first that maybe you don't typically have. So um, again, my name's April. I'm with Copsa Odi. We are a CPA advisory firm that specializes in salon and spa uh, taxation. And what I uh, want to tell you a little bit about today are the relief packages that are out there. Um, you're all aware that our fearless leaders in the Senate and Congress and President have been working to try to get some relief out to you. I think the first thing that I would say to you is to really dig deep into your expenses. And I know Sam's going to talk a little bit about this too, but you know, I would say first and foremost, you know, what are those bills that you absolutely have to pay? And what are those bills that you don't have to pay? So, you know, let's get back to probably um, you know, a, a high school accounting class. And let's just think about what do we have to pay and what don't we have to pay? So let's start there maybe. Yeah, for sure. So that's some great yeah, advice, yeah. April, because Matt, what I did April was, you know, I talked about that stabilize. So uh, first thing I did mm -hmm. was stabilize my family because my wife is medically endangered and her immune system. So we need to stabilize her surroundings. What's going to be our policy within our family, our rules, let's say, in terms of going out, coming in, who goes out, who does what? So we stabilized that. Then the next thing we did was looked at our finances. And I asked my wife because she's a great accountant. She, she loves doing all those numbers. She's good at it. And I said, first, just answer me a question. Can we survive the max? Let's say six months. I just picked a, a figure in the sky, said six months. Let me know, can we survive? You know, mortgage payments, every all the bills we have. She came back to me the next day and she said, yes, we can. I said, okay, now let's stabilize some finances though because we don't know how long this can exist. So let's take a look at simple things, which I love what you're saying, April, is what bills do you need to pay and what bills you know do you have that kind of can wait? that you can kind of get some time on. One of the first simple things we did was look at our phone. We picked up the phone and I said, look at all your apps. The apps you don't want, get rid of them. Let's get rid of them. And I mean, let's delete them and, and, and just get them off. And when we did that, it was amazing that we discovered we were saving just over $200 a month. And to some people, that $200 is going to mean something. So I love what you're saying there, April, in terms of looking at those simple things like almost – you know, a grade school accountant, so to speak. I think it's a great place to start. Right. Yeah. And I think right now is a time when, you know, call in those relationships. This is a relationship business. You know, the best part about being part of the beauty industry is everywhere I go, I'm greeted with a hug and I'm greeted with a smile. Call those people that you work with every day. Call your coach, call your accountant, call your tax person, call your bookkeeper, you know, call all those vendors, call the credit card company. Lots of credit card companies are allow you to defer payments. Lots of bankers are allow you to defer mortgage, um, you know, rent. Look at everything, absolutely everything, because in this time, it's the time to call on relationships. And that's what it's about right now. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so when we look at the beauty industry, like the first thing as a salon owner, what, you know, me and my wife did was we, we looked at how do we cut everything from the salon? That was kind of like initially our, our thoughts. So, um, and like Sam said, like I cut out tons of services that we were already doing. So I, we saved 700 bucks a month just in services. Mm -hmm. Now I have a lot more services than most salons because we're also a media company in a way as well, but there were so many things that we were paying mm -hmm. so much for, uh, internet storage and different things that we didn't really need it. Um, so we cut that. Then we did it out of our personal life. Um, but there's a lot of things that you can't cut. So when you look at like uh, the rent or the lease on your salon business, um, things like that, are there things that are happening now that we should know about that people that they have to pay? Are there things that they can do to kind of help with that? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, in phase one of the Coronavirus Act, we saw that the SBA offered some emergency um, disaster recovery with relief. And so I would encourage you to go take a look at their website. It, it's sba.gov. 
to uh, see if that's something that you'd like to take advantage of. Um, they're offering a lot of leniency on their typical requirements uh, to get that type of a loan. So take a look there. They're also, as part of phase three of the Coronavirus Act, uh, put out some new information where within um, they're saying three days. I haven't seen it happen yet, but I'm sure they're working hard on it. That you can get an advance on that disaster recovery loan to help with things, and that's ten thousand. You know, that's the first one. The other thing that came out in phase three of the of the act is another SBA loan, and it's one that you'll have to talk to your banker about. And that's where I talk about relationships. You know, some of the smaller banks might not be able to do that, but the bigger banks are certainly set up, I would think, to uh, start doing some of that. They're just at this point going to be gathering information because what the government's telling us right now is that those banks won't have that information until the end of the week. Um, but that is a paycheck protection program. And part of that paycheck protection program is going to allow you to get funds to cover two and a half times your monthly payroll. And pieces of that will be forgiven if you qualify, if you follow the rules. And Matt, like you said, you know, to cover rent and mortgage interest payments, it also will um, help with those types of things. So that one, I just want everybody to relax a little bit because you can't call your bank today probably and apply for that because they don't have the information. But they're saying by the end of the week, the hope is that they will have that. So you might want to get on your banker's schedule um, so that you're in line to do that. And I do, um, I've heard quite a few um, like accountants saying like you should have this relationship with your banker. What does that mean? Like who who is the person, are we going to the teller? at the front counter or are we, who is our banker? Like who, who is that relationship that we're, that we're trying to build? Typically most banks have what they call relationship managers. And so, you know, I would just call the bank and if you don't already, if you have a banking relationship, you probably know who that person is, but if you don't, then call them and just tell them that you're looking for an opportunity to, to create a partnership with a bank, a long standing partnership um, certainly this probably won't be the only time that you need them. So I would say, um, ask for a relationship manager. Perfect. All right. April, I have a question for you. One of the, uh, things that I've been suggesting out there, and I just need some guidance on this is a, a lot of, uh, pros and cons about it that I've got is, uh, this whole idea of, um, uh, reschedule and purchase gift card. You know, there's some pros and cons mm -hmm. about that. What's your take on that? And, and I'm talking in terms of survival. There's some people out there that tell me, Sam, I need to survive. I need some cash now. You know, maybe there's people out there sure. that live from paycheck to paycheck. And this is a learning lesson for them. But they're like, I need to survive now. And one of the suggestions I'm giving them is, okay, you know, you need to get some, get some, some prepay, get some pre-schedule, some, some gift cards and get that going. And then you can give mm -hmm. commission to your staff. But then they're coming back, Sam, and they're working for free. What's your take on all of that? So that's a really good question, Sam, because um, we want to be careful with gift cards, at least a little bit, because keep in mind that when you sell, let's say, a $100 gift card, I know, just like mm -hmm. all of you, that for a $100 service, you have, what, 6 to $8 in professional product you have to put on a person's hair. If you're a commission-based salon, you're probably paying between $45 and $50 of that for commission. You know, you have the credit card processing fee. So be careful that you're not giving it away because if you give it away, it's going to come back to bite you later. You might get the cash now, but later when you actually have to provide the service or sell the retail, um, it, it's going to hurt. And, and keep in mind that gift cards are subject to federal and state income tax. So it's not yes. like you can avoid... Uh, federal and state income tax on top of that. So, yeah. And there is, um, okay, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. April, there's, uh, mm -hmm. there are loans and things that are happening right now that are tax, uh, like tax free, correct? There's, there's different, um, options. Like there's not just one way to go about it. There's, I, I believe there's a few different options of getting financially. Like if you're a salon owner, there's options. If you're a, um, just a, uh, what's it called? An individual contractor or independent contractor. There's different Full options. So what are those? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So in the most recent bill, they did open up the ability for a sole proprietor as well as an independent contractor to qualify for those paycheck protection loans. And um, pieces of that will be tax tax exempt. So I think it's really important that, like I said, with that relationship you have with your banker, to make sure that they explain to you what those options are. Um, you know, as a tax professional, we're going to be really focusing on, you know, how do you get those payroll tax credits that might be available to you by um, by paying some leave. But the, the other piece of that really is going to be that relationship with your banker. I see there's a question over in the chat about the SBA Paycheck Protection Program with an independent stylist. And um, as far as what we've seen come out, there was actually some information that came out from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce just yesterday that clarified that uh, PPL is what it's called, Paycheck Protection Loan, and that independent stylists, uh, sole proprietors, independent contractors will qualify for that. So definitely something to take a look at. Great. And uh, we also have uh, Megan. She said she's opening a new salon next year. If she takes advantage of these packages, will it be jeopardizing her SBA loan in the future? Well, that's a really great question, Megan. I, mm -hmm. I don't know the answer to that. Um, you know, if you're if you're taking advantage of those loans as an independent stylist right now and then you're thinking you're going to open this business later i think i would have that conversation i do think there are some opportunities within that legislation to roll uh current or um, old sba loans into these new ones and vice versa uh, but they haven't given us clear guidance on that and again that's probably more of a banker question um than a tax question Okay. And then, uh, so from a tax standpoint, uh, when you look at uh, payroll, so when we talk about employees and um, either put, like, should our employees go on um, unemployment? Should we be putting our employees on unemployment? Should independent stylists be doing that? Is What are the benefits to keeping somebody, like our salon pays health insurance, right? Um, so sure. we pay health insurance, but if you're no longer an employee, that becomes a kind of a, a different thing. So there's, I think there's different angles yeah. to it. What do you think uh, is, mm -hmm. is kind of the best? Well, I, I, Matt, that's a really great question. And I think that it really comes down to what amount of cash flow do you have on hand when this started? Um, if you have the cash on hand that you've been able to keep your people on, you're going to be able to cover those benefits, hopefully with that cash for a period of time, and then be able to cut, to go ahead and apply for this PPL program or maybe the disaster recovery program. Um, I, you know, we work with hundreds of salons across the country, and I can say probably we're at the point right now where probably 50% of that at a minimum are closed right now. And so, you know, they're yeah. two weeks into unemployment already. Um, and so there's nothing that prevents a salon owner from going ahead and going, having their people go through that unemployment process. And I would encourage you as a salon owner to help your team do that. Um, because mm -hmm. this is a stressful time. And for a lot of stylists out there, I would say that, and to the owners, keep in mind, this might be the most difficult thing that your stylist has ever gone through. You know, a lot of uh, folks that have been in the industry of a long, you know, for a long time have lived through the ups and downs of the economy. But for maybe a stylist that's been out there in the field working, maybe for five years or so, they haven't experienced this before. And so anything that we can do to help them, walk them through that unemployment process, I think that's a great thing to do. And a lot of states are actually allowing you to do that as a group. So instead of sending one out, everyone out there to do it on their own, maybe maybe have mm -hmm. a Zoom call or, or something and walk through yes. it together. Um, there's nothing that's going to prevent you as an owner to bringing them back and then going forward with some of these programs. So the unemployment program was uh, loosened up a lot with these um, with phase two or and phase one and actually in phase three so that you don't have to wait a week that you typically have to wait. 
to qualify for benefits. Um, you typically would also have to show you're applying for jobs, which you don't have to do under most state requirements. And I should say that just one more time. I said state requirements because it's not really a federal thing. Um, the federal government is helping the states so that they can pay for all of this, but it really is a state by state um, thing. The other thing I haven't mentioned that I should have is that if you haven't filed your your tax return for 2019, you now don't have to file that return until July 15th. Um, so you have some time to do that. And you also have time to pay the taxes if you have taxes due. So take that time. But I would encourage you um, to, if you're going to get a refund, get it filed so you can get your refund back. That's going to help your cash flow. Um, and then the other thing is that if you are a, a, a business person that pays estimates, your first quarterly estimate isn't due like it typically would be. There's an extended period of time to pay that as well. So, Okay. And when you talk about you know, the... Go ahead, Sam. Go ahead. No, Matt, go ahead. No, I just wanted to... With the unemployment, um, and the one yeah. thing that I did see that there's a... Uh, uh, also a $600 bump a week on that. So technically if stylists are filing for unemployment, they only get a piece of what their income was, which is going to be probably pretty small. But um, from what mm -hmm. I'm understanding that $600 a week might actually, some stylists might be making more money on unemployment than they do behind the chair to be 100% honest. So, yeah. so that's uh, I something. Think that that's the piece of the bill that almost got it axed right, <laughs> you know because yeah. i think there is some fear that people will make more money and not want to come back but um yeah. you know i don't believe that about this industry this I industry works hard and i people will come back to work and they'll come back to work because they love their clients they will come back to work because they they love the people that they work with you know yeah. i um i might be an accountant and many people think that accountants kind of are cubicle type of girls or gals or guys or whatever <laughs> but you know i love going to industry events because i love that part of what i do um and i i really feel that that's how this industry is yeah. um I don't care if you're making more money staying at home or not. I think you'll be back because you love your clients. For sure. And I, you, you know, know, April, yeah, Go. Uh, you know, <laughs> April, I, I love what you're saying. No, that's okay, Matt. I love what you're saying because here's what we need to think about, you know, stop worrying about the negativity and just flip it. Mm -hmm. So guess what? You, you're going to help these people. That's the goodness in you. So like what April is saying, help them walk them through unemployment. How about just getting on FaceTime and save your employee one by one? Let's you and I do this in unemployment together. Let me help you do this together. You know, that means a lot to them. And guess what? If that stylist doesn't come back, then yay, they weren't meant to be with you. They never were a team player. They never were what you thought they were. So you have to look at the good side of this, guys. You know, don't worry if people aren't going to come back. Guess what? So many people are watching everybody right now on social. It's our business card right now. It's our way of communicating. Where I'm finding people, I'm finding heroes right now that I never knew. I'm finding, wow, I'd hire that hairdresser. Oh, I'd hire that hairdresser. You know, you, you, there's so many good things that are going to come out of this. So I think what we need to do, guys, is stay on that positive side. I really believe that you know, we will recover. It may not be easy guys, but the salon industry is going to recover. And right now it doesn't look like it's going to be easy, but we're going to help each other as much as we can, but we will only recover if we unite together. Thank you, yeah. April, for taking the time and doing this. The industry needs you right now. You, you people are needed more right now than anything, but we will, we, we will recover together with your support. We will once again, prosper together. I believe that, guys. I believe that. And yet, do me a favor. Let's continue to do what we're doing now, which is nourishing each other. Thank you, Matt, for the opportunity, the platform that you provide. April, how you're nourishing us with this great information. But it's going to be up to each individual to follow up on this information. Don't wait for somebody to grab you by the hand. We're all busy. But most importantly, what I hope is that we come out on the other side of this thing, loving each other and supporting each other just like we do now. No more walkouts. Employers, employees, 
session stylists, independent stylists, everybody. We all gather and we band together and stay together, especially when we're past this. But I just really feel that this is an opportunity for us. We all understand the severity of the issue. And we all have choices that we can make. There's so much learning that's going to go on. I'm learning a lot just listening to April in terms of, you know, how I can support people out there and things that I can do for myself. But you know what? The, the key thing is to do continue to research and use your sources, you know. But most importantly, and I think April probably will get to this, is have a plan. Right now is, is time to make a plan. If, if I were you a salon owner, I'd plan a reopening. A, a grand opening again. And then you probably might be asking me, well, Sam, when am I going to open? I don't know, but at least you got the plan. So when you are ready to open, boom, you got everything in place. As soon as those doors open, we're having a grand opening. You know, things like this, guys, are the things that I can offer you in terms of that. But, you know, the, the important thing is right now, I think, is the key thing right now is everybody's concerned and fearful of, you know, survival, survival. And if we support each other and, and, and have each other's back, we're going to survive together through this. Sorry, I just got on that roll there. No, that's great, Sam. And this is the thing, guys. Like, we have to realize that the, um, you know, this this industry, like, what I see everybody freaking out about is is that financially they, they didn't feel, they weren't ready for it. They're living paycheck yes. to paycheck. I see I see the, the comments. And, you know, it is great that some people have a cushion. But for me, it's like you know, those people were thinking ahead. Now moving forward, we're all going to think ahead and we're all the greatest part about this whole thing is that every single one of us are all sitting in our house right now and not allowed to leave, not allowed to work. We're not allowed to do a lot of things. And so we're all in the same exact place. So we need to realize that there's really, there's nothing you can do about it. And the government, as long as you listen to people like April is actually going to start giving you money until this is over. So it, Everyone just needs to stay focused. And, and I've been talking about this on the podcast a lot. Just keep yourself educated, educated through people yes. like April, educated through people like Sam watching, you know, free salon education videos, doing those things that are going to help keep your mind focused and getting better. And we should be getting better every day and not worried about the negative part that we can't control. Mm -hmm. Spend the time with your family, spend the time at home, you know, study up and stay positive and, you know, and, and reach out to companies like uh, April's April has and, and make sure that you're just stay knowledgeable. If you're knowledgeable, then you, you're not going to be as scared uh, in the end. So um, April is there yes, any other, I, yeah. No, I was just going to say, Matt, you know, there, there's people and I'm well, I'll, sorry, April, but there's people out there, Matt, that, that are not prepared for this. They haven't done what they need to do or, you know, whatever it happens to be. And they have lived paid at paycheck. And let's be real here. You know, I, I'm loving this conversation. So I just want to bring to the surface the Professional Beauty Association. You know, the Professional Beauty Association is just getting swamped with questions in regards to what do I do? I need help me out with an SBA loan, things like that. But right now, here's how you can really help out. There's those people out there. Some of our colleagues are in, in, in a desperate, desperate need of financial help up steps to the plate, the Professional Beauty Association. So what they've done is I need you to go to uh, www.probeauty.org and I want you, if you are able to, I want you to go to the COVID-19 Relief Fund program that PBA has set up on their website. And this is a fund which we at the San Via brand have already donated to, but it's a fund that's out there that's going to help those hairdressers that are in need. It's a specific fund for salons and for hairdressers. So they are accepting mm -hmm. applications for that. But most importantly, they're only going to be able to help those people if people like us that are capable that we donate to that COVID yeah. relief, COVID-19 relief fund. So I just wanted to bring that to service and thank you PBA for what you guys do for the industry. And the PBA correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, and Elizabeth isn't on here. Um, but she, they were going to say that the, the, a uh, membership to the PBA currently right now is, is free of charge. Is that true? Or am I getting that right? Yes, it is. For okay. Yes, you have it right. Matt. Mm -hmm. For individuals. Go ahead, yeah. April. Yeah. For individuals. Yeah. yeah I think that, but, uh, yeah, for individuals, non-members. So I think okay. the other thing I would add to that, Sam, is that, um, you know, we are referring a lot of folks to the PBA or the Pro Beauty um, 
website because they also have some great resources for those of you that maybe mm -hmm. don't have a labor law attorney. With all this emergency family medical leave information and sick leave information, um, it, it's very complicated stuff. And so go to the probeauty.org website so that you can stay informed about that if you're a business owner, because right now is the time that you need to know that. And they have the advocates there that are taking care of that. So please, please go do that. I'm really sad Elizabeth's not on with us. Um, yeah. The other thing that I would tell you is that, um, like Matt was saying, you know, get get in touch with your professionals. And he he mentioned Copsa Odi. Um, obviously, I'm not a team of one. There's 30 of us that work at Copsa Odi. Uh, but your best way of getting information from us on updates in the tax law is to sign up for our newsletter, and it's free. And all you have to do is text the keyword KOA News to the number 22828. And I know that that's gonna get sent out after this podcast with some information, but I know that my office can't handle a lot of calls. And so I want you guys to sign up for that newsletter so that you can stay up to date with what's going on. Um, and and finally, I just, wanted, I, I just wanna share with you that I, I feel what Sam is saying and I feel what some of your you stylists are feeling and that's that I don't have a cash reserve and I, I just don't know what to do. And I have to tell you that we've all been in places like that. And it really is our mindset that, that allows us mm -hmm. to choose how we react to things. And so, you know, I've been through some hard things myself over, the, over my lifetime. And those things are what have made me better. And I know that you're going to come out of this time and you're going to be better. So sit down. Right now is the time to sit down. Go through your business plan. Think about those things that are vital to your business. Get rid of the fat in your business. Keep those things that create muscle in your business. And really start making a plan. And like Sam said, you're going to have the biggest re-grand opening you've ever had. And you know what? You might set a date and you may have to shift that date a little bit, but be prepared to walk in that door with your head held high and be ready to do what it is that you do best. Perfect. April, well said, you know, yes. really well said. I, and I just want to support that guys because you know, I, I, I know we all went through this. We all went through that grief. It's like, oh, my gosh, you know, and you're feeling this grief like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. But I think that it's important that, you know, the first thing that I went through was denial. I'm going to be really honest here. I went through denial. It's like, ah, this virus okay. won't affect us here in the U.S. It's not going to get here. We're so medically uh, able to take care of it. It's not going to get here. That was my denial. Then I went through this grief of anger. It's like, hold on, guys, you're making me stay home. I can't go out and play golf. I can't go out and, and, and do what I need to do, which is work. But I went through this anger. It's like the why. Then there's this bargaining that went through, this bargaining of grief where I really started to say, okay, if I social distance for two weeks, everything will be better, right? And, and that was the, that bargaining that I was going through. And I'm talking about my mindset, what my mindset was going through through this whole thing. And then there was sadness. And the sadness was, was mm. I don't know when this will end. So, and then finally there's acceptance. Then I went through this acceptance. I go, okay, this is happening. I have to figure out how to proceed in a plan. And that's where my mindset has been. So my mindset went through those stages of, of grief and what I was going through, but it, it was all about how I had to just say, okay, this is happening. How am I going to do, do with it? What I need to do is take the worst images and make them really positive images. So I just wanted to share that. So it's all about, you know, just calm yourself and be in the present. So I love what April said, saying it's in your mindset. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have one little voice talking to me. I got a committee up here, especially yeah. this committee now has become two committees up here. Two committees on each side, left side and right side of my brain. But the yeah. main thing is calm, calm yourself. And you you have to stay in the present, guys. So how do you do that, Sam? You know, we've been talking. Andrew Crothers has been talking about it. Breathe, meditate. You know, one little exercise I do to get me in the present, April, Matt, is I do uh, this five, four, three, two, one. Five things I can see. Four things I can uh, uh, touch. Three things I can hear. 
two things I can smell and one thing I can taste. And that brings me right back to the moment. Because if I get caught in that negativity, I can take myself below the line. And when I go below the line, I start affecting my little three-year-old. I start affecting my wife. So mm -hmm. really understand those stages of grief and get to that one where it's all about acceptance and you're going to be fine. Yeah. Thank you, Matt, for that. It's great, guys. So, uh, and, you know, I, I want to rapid fire a few questions because, I, I mean, people have been posting questions quite a bit. Uh, the one thing I would say to you guys is rest now because when they do open the doors again, <laughs> everyone's going to be pretty bad looking and we're going to need, we're going to be working, uh, you know, 12 hours a day to get everybody in. So rest. Um, all right. So if you guys have time, I know April's got to go. So um, a couple questions, we'll do real quick answers for them. Um, somebody said, I'm concerned about a grand reopening. We may be limited to the number of people allowed in the building at a time. And that concerns me about the day to day in the future. What do we change? How do we change scheduling? Sam, do you have any thoughts on that? Okay. You bet. So there's there's uh, what I look at as a as a thought of that's a very serious thought. You know, maybe we might have limitations. So maybe that's not the time to do it. So when you have those limitations released on you, that's the time to do it. So there you go. Take a thought. That's a what if and then turn it into I can. So maybe I can't do it then, but I can do it maybe a month, two months later down the road and have yeah. that big opening to saying, hey, we are back 100 percent, not 50 percent. But that's what I want you to think about. The main thing is have a grand opening. Someday you will have it. You'll know when is the best time for you to have it based upon your surroundings. April, Hope that are, helps out. Yeah, that's great. Perfect. Um, April, are you eligible for an SBA loan if you're if you just opened your salon suite? This week, I think the answer to that is no. Um, I no, no, think that you have to suite. be in business. I think uh, a salon suite, so like uh, like a studio salon. Oh. If she just opened it, probably let's say she opened it a month or two ago, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure what the date is in the SBA uh, okay. loan rates, but I think that it was February 15th. I think that's probably a question to look on the SBA.gov website. Before okay. we end up getting off this, I want to make sure I say one thing, and that's that, guys, be looking in your bank accounts if you do direct deposit through the IRS because they are telling us sometime here in the next few weeks, an in individual gets $1,200 and each dependent $500. So there's a little celebration for you that will be coming. It's based on the 18 tax return if you haven't filed 19. Um, and then they tell us it will be trued up somehow in 20. Um, and keep in mind, there are some phase outs. If you if you make way too much money, you do phase out of that. But um, that there's a little a little, I guess, gift you could call it that's going to be coming to to every everyone that's filed a U.S. tax return. So um, I wanted to get that out there because I forgot to say it earlier. No, that's great. And honestly, and I know you got to go. So let's just let's do this, guys. This isn't going to be the last podcast. Obviously, we can go live all the time. Um, if you guys need any information, best sources, PBA's website, uh, for sure, which I'm, I don't know the exact website, but, um, do you know the, pr uh, PBA's exact website address? ProBeauty.org is the best place to go. ProBeauty.org. Okay, good. Yeah. PBA is probably bowling or something, right? So, um, and then, so pro ProBeauty.org, um, they have a ton of information on there. Uh, obviously, um, you know, there's, there's different outlets, but I think that that's your number one. Talk to your banker, or if you don't have a banker, create a relationship, call them up, tell them you, you'd love to look at their hair sometime. Uh, and then, you know, and just keep watching for more podcasts and more in this. Um, if we didn't get to your question, I apologize, post it in the comments and, uh, we can bring it up on a future show as well. Um, thank you, April, so much. Where, where can people follow you and, and get more information about what you guys do there? Um, I guess that. Sure. So um, www.copsaod.com. And it's you can see the spelling behind me, but it's K-O-P-S-A-O-T-T-E.com. And um, you can go to that website and click on newsletter and then sign up, see our past newsletters, and then sign up for 
uh, any new newsletters that are coming out. That's probably the best way right now. Um, we are feverishly working to help our current clients. And so taking on new business right now is extremely difficult. Um, so that's probably the best way for you to uh, be in touch with us. Perfect. And then Sam? Well, uh, Matt, you can catch us on uh, all of our social platforms on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. Instagram, Sam via, uh, Sam via hair. Uh, Facebook, Sam Via Professional, and YouTube slash Sam Via. So you'll see us constantly out there sharing tons of education. And the last thing I just want to leave you with, guys, is that, remember, you know, you, you can't control what you can't control. So remember what I said, what your neighbor is doing is out of your hands. So this is the time for us to overprotect and not overact. God bless you all. All right, guys. Thank you Great so much. Time. Thank you so Great. much. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you to everybody for watching Sam, April, I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the future, hopefully. All right. Um, let's see, let me close this thing out here. Guys, thank you so much for, uh, just hanging in there, posting your questions. I know everybody's a little stressed right now, but there's no reason to be stressed because the future's looking bright. Uh, we got a lot of great things to look forward to. The government is trying to help people out. You just got to be patient. Um, salons, you know, talk to your, your CPA, talk to your accountant, talk to your, talk to the bank, uh, figure out what you're eligible for and think about your decisions because my salon's different than your salon and everybody's salon is different. Everybody's situation is different. Everybody provides different things. So it's just so important to make sure that you're uh, educated on it. We've all got time to be educated. Uh, don't read the negativity on the internet read the facts. So find those facts on the PBA's website, uh, probeauty.org. Uh, thank you to minervabeauty.com for uh, just creating this gathering of uh, minds so that we could really discuss this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and that's pretty much it. So follow everybody, follow Minerva Beauty, follow Free Salon Education. Uh, hope you enjoyed the podcast. We'll be back with more. Post your questions in the comments for a later episode and we'll get those answered. Take care, guys. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.